Hi, chocolate. <laughs> Robert. I have my brother. Apropos for him. It's not a wrong holiday. It's Passover. We just passed. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> All right, we got more coming in. So far, your first comment. Jim loves the music. All right. What's not to like? It's good stuff. So my choice of this music, this is, people ask me if I have uh, headphones on when I'm riding or do I listen to something. So I'll, this is one of the prime ones that I'm listening to in my head when I'm riding. How's my voice sound? Good, I can hear you. Okay, if you're wondering, I'm set up on a bike trainer. That's why you'll see me rocking back and forth. <laughs> okay. Okay, seven, so seven o'clock, I'm gonna go do my noise for one minute, and then we'll come back and get started. So we're honoring the medical personnel in New York by taking a break and going to our windows. So we have 31 people here, Ed, uh, and so far I've kept uh, clearing everybody, so there's no waiting list. So why don't I just quickly welcome everybody. Thank you for taking the time on a Friday night for coming to our first edition of Friday Night at the Movies. It's Ed Sobin's brainchild, and he's going to spend the first three taking us through his cost country trip. So behind every, almost every leader in this club, behind every leader in this club is watch my screen, Ed Sobin. <laughs> He's been involved in training. Uh, he'll let you know for how long, a lot of the leaders in this club. And so we're very grateful to have him as a member of our board, as uh, the one who trains all our leaders. But what's amazing is that uh, fairly recently he took this cross country trip. So I'm not gonna take any more time. I'm just gonna hand it over to Ed to tell you all about this trip. So thank you very much. I do wanna suggest that you grab some popcorn if you haven't already, I don't know why it's not showing. Well, there you go. And settle in for a nice ride. Thank you. Over to you, Ed. Okay. So, so what we, so this is the, uh, this is the adventure cycling map. So in, in one of those emails you, sh you got, um, there was a bunch of links. I think the, the most recent one that has the link to this adventure cycling route map and the warm showers site 
and um, map my ride, ride with GPS, with the Katy Trail and with the, the Gap Trail. So we'll be, I'll be talking about those as we get there in the, um, in the route, but to give you the general idea, so all these different colored routes for adventure cycling are there mapped routes across the country. And I was basically redoing my 1976 Trans Am route, which is this orange one. But in, uh, in 76, I started here. Can, I, can you see the cursor, everybody? I think so, right? Yes. Yeah, yep. yep. So in 76, I rode down, kind of just angled through into there, into the Blue Ridge Mountains and picked it up there. This time, I followed this blue line through, through Maryland, up to Pittsburgh, Ohio, and then I kind of went off on my own through Indiana and, and Southern Illinois and got to St. Louis and then did the Katy Trail, which is this little bit of this brown line, and then did my own thing again to get here back to the Trans Am in Kansas. And then I stayed on that for the rest of the time. So I'll be, we'll be looking at that in more detail. So the, the little part we just did now, so you, you see, and you see this new more detailed one, right? Mm -hmm. So it was, the, it was the ferry in the morning to uh, Atlantic Highland. I did not do this, I probably should have. I, I did my own thing to get to Trenton around the outside of Philly and then got on this blue, which is a New York to Chicago adventure cycling route and rode through Lancaster and Penn Dutch and York down here past Taggerstown. And here I got on the Western Maryland Rail Trail, which is just a nice 20 mile paved one. And then I looked at the C and O Canal, was not happy, went on the regular road to get to Cumberland where you pick up the Gap Trail, the Great Allegheny Passage. And that one is, is great. It's this nice crushed white, um, limestone so very nice and took that up to pittsburgh and then there's another rail trail not far out of pittsburgh there's two of them and they kind of join together and get you almost all the way to wheeling so so let us go for some photos how long did that take um which part well, let's just say the part you just talked through to get to Wheeling. Um, Wheeling was only like two weeks, maybe, something like that. And New York to Philly? Um, New York to Philly was two days, day and a half. Okay. One day to Trenton, easy day to Trenton, and an easy day to Philly. I went to um, past Philly to... Um, People waiting to come in. Okay. Valley Forge. So it, that was another day, you know, but not a, you know, a longish day, but not bad. Very hot, of course. That's the story of my life with all these trips. So it's always hotter than I want it. So let me do the screen share here. I should say people shouldn't be so shy. You could share pictures. It's good to see who we're, who we've got with us. Oh, wow. <laughs> Took a few years off. <laughs> so we have to we have to start at the very beginning. <laughs> so this so this is part of the uh, so this is my third cross country trip. So this is 1976, which was the year that adventure cycling started. It was called Bike Centennial that year because it was the bicentennial. So this is my house in East Flatbush. What this this little brown thing, that's the top of like a six inch long knife that I rode with because things in Brooklyn in those days were very tough. So the first few weeks, it just seemed logical that of course I'm gonna ride with a big knife. And I do have gloves here on the handlebars, but no helmet, no, you know, the bike shirt is a white t-shirt and the bike pants are like Sears, um, <laughs> you know, hard polyester pants because they drive fast and the special bike sneakers that are not really sneakers. And this, this is the action shot. <laughs> I had a flag, which seemed to be the thing to do those days. I didn't wear a helmet, but I did have a flag. 
and I did have this nice orange thing, which I still have versions of this one for visibility. And then this is the, the 1996, 20 years later, in front, of my, in front of my house. So you always have to start in front of your house for a good cross country trip. <laughs> <laughs> and this is kind of the send off crew um, on the promenade. I was living in Brooklyn Heights then. There's Glenn Nissen who's on here somewhere. And then we and then we get now to the to the current day, 1988 in May. So there's Debbie Friedman and Eileen Cap, both still members. Um, and this is this is in front of my house. Luckily, it had stopped raining. <laughs> they just were your send off team. Yes, that was my send off team. Ed Raven took the photo. He doesn't like being in pictures, but he likes he's helpful in taking them. So he was there taking them. And this is a work day, so they all, this is kind of, I don't know, 7 a.m. or something on some weekday in, in May. And Ed rode with me over the bridge because he works in Manhattan and he often rides in. So he rode into work that day. And this is the, this is the ferry slip and there's the, the ferry. It was getting nice and sunny out. And then here, here we are in the, uh, the Garden State, New Jersey, even, even New Jersey has some nice scenery. And this is my first night. This is partly why I decided to go to Trenton. This is my, an old high school friend's uncle who I've known for 50 years. So um, he lives just outside of Trenton. So I decided I'd visit him and stay at his house on that first night. And this is crossing over the Delaware into, uh, you know, from New Jersey at Trenton to to Pennsylvania. So this is kind of to kind of look at the gear a little bit. It was these waterproof Watley panniers in the back, and the not really waterproof panniers that I had big plastic garbage bags in to keep things dry if I really wanted to. The Jan smaller ones in the front and a handlebar bag. And this is all still, this is one day, easy one day ride. This is Washington's Crossing. So if you took the train to Trenton, you could easily do this and be back in one day. And now we're getting into more uh, Pennsylvania Dutch place. So I spent the, that second night in, uh, outside of Philly there in Valley Forge. It was not as cold as it was for Washington. It was like really hot. But luckily, I was not camping. I wound up staying with, at what hotels.com, which was my main hotel finder on the trip because it works so well on the phone. So they did have a room, but it was actually a, um, a retreat, like a Christian retreat center. So it was very peaceful. <laughs> Oops, wrong way. So the, you know, the usual covered bridge, Pennsylvania, Dutch land. This is uh, the next day. These people are uh, warm showers. So I sent that website out. So they have uh, touring cyclists come and stay with them. And when they're bike touring, they, you know, try and stay at other people. And the deal is you stay one or two nights and you, you're not allowed to pay anything and they feed you and you're just their guests. And, you know, often they'll come ride with you the first day or come pick you up. So, and they lived outside of Gettysburg. So I went through Gettysburg also. No sightseeing in either Valley Forge or Gettysburg because I was kind of still on a mission at that point. If I would have known, I wound up getting to, uh, to Oregon a little ahead of when I expected, though I didn't really have any expectation. But I, I probably should have done some sightseeing. So these were very nice people. I think they had like five kids and they met working at EMS as managers, Eastern Mountain Sports. And this is now we're getting into more Western Maryland, really big, nice trees and these old stone bridges. And, you know, interesting old kind of Civil War looking buildings. Hey, uh, there's a question. Who took these pictures? Mostly you or did you find a passerby or how? Usually there was, 
usually not many passers, passers by, which is why there's not so many pictures of me. Almost any picture of me is from some, so this is the start of the Western Maryland Trail. So I saw some people <laughs> because they were riding their bikes on it. And the other one where I took the pictures of the people I was staying with, they took a picture of me right after that. But all the other, you know, the pictures without me are all by me, almost all with my iPhone, actually, iPhone 8. I do want to just remind everybody, I didn't say this at the beginning, but don't bother raising your hand in the thing, because I won't know why you're doing that. But do ask any questions that you have in the group chat. And uh, Ed, I'll just pipe them in as they come in. There was one earlier from Gina. How long did you train for this ride? Your whole life? Well, um, I didn't really train because I didn't have any goal of how, what distance I was going to do, so it didn't really matter um, what I did. I was, I guess training for me is if I have a choice of walking or hiking or biking, I pick biking. And if I kind of, I'm thinking, should I go out for a ride today or shouldn't I, I'll go out for the ride. But I don't like try and get faster or try and like, up my mileage and and do anything like that. I just uh, start out as slow as I need to start out. And you need to spend enough time on the bike so your body isn't hurting too much, but you don't have to do anything much with speed or distance. If you're retired, if you have to finish. When I did it in 96, I had a spreadsheet with all my uh, different miles per day and where I should be. And I had to check that because I had 10 weeks off from work and I had a return one way ticket from, it was from Seattle in 96. And so I had to kind of really stay on a schedule and that one I, I was training for. But this time, if you, if you don't have any distance you need to do, you don't really need to train too much. So this question is from Ken. Do you have a sleeping bag and a tent in your bags? Not yet. So I started out the first few weeks, I, I could see that there was so many hotel, motel, and home stay visit possibilities that part of the training was I thought I'd just keep that extra five or six pounds off and go, you know, slightly lighter and add it on later on when I needed it. So I was, I was you know, relying on hotels and people's houses at this point. Keeps the wrong way again. So this is what that nice Western Maryland trail is. Nice paved one next to the train tracks with not many trains going by. Some nice shade. And this is after the 20 miles, then I got to the CNO Canal. And it had been rainy. And the CNO Canal is a historic landmark. And they, it's a, you know, it's for mules to walk on. So there's a lot of deep, muddy puddles. And that was not really good, but it was, you know, not terrible. And then there was trees down. So I'm kind of lugging my bike with the bags on it up and over the trees. And that was getting really bad. And then there was even more bigger trees down. And I met some people who were mountain biking, covered in mud, coming in the other direction, who, who said, oh, who were talking about how great it was because it was so muddy and messy. And I was like, I don't think I'm liking that. So I went out to the road which was a nice big road, you know, a nice shoulder, and gave up on the CNO Canal and rode this thing into Cumberland, Maryland. And Cumberland is that's where the CNO Canal ends and the, this great Allegheny Passage rail trail starts. So there's lots of tunnels. I, I like this warning sign don't enter tunnel with oncoming train. <laughs> And when, tra when train approaching exit tunnels, like, okay, I can, I can go for that. <laughs> so it's a, it's a nice, uh, so 1911, I guess. And I like keep right of fence, really, like you think somebody's going to like ride on the track. So I guess you never really know. So um, question, uh, was there anything you meant to carry that you were not bringing with you on the trip or forgetting, I guess? Or? No, I had everything. I needed and then some. So on the on the second day, I mailed myself a package of stuff that I said, why did I take this stuff? So just a small package, one of those Postal Express 
it was a, I forget if it was a medium or a small, but you know, it was maybe two pounds or so, three pounds. And I'm like, I don't need this stuff. I'm, I'm mailing it ahead to myself. So we'll, we'll see that package later on. What was your total elevation gain for the whole trip? I don't know. That was, a, that was kind of a shame. I have a GPS and I, um, I was, I did had all the routes in it beforehand and then I wrote them and recorded it. But somewhere near the end in Oregon, maybe, or maybe the, before that, you know, a couple of days, weeks before that, my GPS locked up and I had to do a factory reset and I lost all the data. And I, and I have been plugging it into my laptop where it's supposed to back itself up, but it didn't for some reason. So I'd have to do arithmetic to add it up. But it was, you know, it was hundreds of thousands of feet of elevation. For sure, a, tip, a typical day was 3,000. So in a, a hundred plus days, I don't know, 100,000 something, 300,000, I don't know, whatever that is. A lot, it was a lot, but I kind of chipped away at it. So this is the longest tunnel, I think, this big savage tunnel. And this, uh, this is all the, the gap trail which is a really worthwhile trip. I'm hoping maybe we can get a, you know, like a four day weekend trip there someday or something, because it's not that far. It goes, you wind up in Pittsburgh, so it's kind of long drives back and forth, but it's a, it's a worthwhile bike tour and it's a good starter. So this is the Eastern Continental Divide, which I hadn't really thought about, but I guess they did. So one side goes to Chesapeake Bay and the other goes to the, to the Gulf of Mexico. And then as you go through towns, they have, towns are not big, um, and they're totally dedicated to people basically riding on this trail. So there's all these nice interpretive signs with where the places are to stay and where the historic places are and campgrounds. And this is the Mason-Dixon line going back from Maryland into Pennsylvania. And lots of great infrastructure. They really did an amazing job. There's just these long, nice bridges, you know, going over railroad tracks, going over rivers, going through tunnels. You know, some really long ones. This is an example of uh, one of the little tiny towns. So that behind me there on the right is the bicycle barn, they called it. So you, that's where we parked the, the bike and it was a bed and breakfast and there was probably like eight people, eight bikers staying in the bed and breakfast and everybody put their bike there. And then in the back, there's a nice old train car. So it's a, it was a nice little town, a couple of restaurants and a few bed and breakfasts. And that was really it. Nobody exactly lived there, it seems like, just the people who ran the bed and breakfast. So this is a package that I had mailed myself from outside of Valley Forge when I realized I didn't need it. And this is a, a handy trick. So you, you put it to your, send it to yourself, general delivery, and you just name the town you're gonna to pick it up in with the zip code and you, you know, hand it to the postal person and, when you, and they'll hold it for up to 30 days. So you send it somewhere where, you, where you know it's like a week ahead so it has time to get there. Oh, you want to do that? Yeah. Okay. Sure. And these are, this is just a sample of uh, four guys who were riding together doing this, uh, the Gap Trail. There was lots of people there. And then this is Pittsburgh, which has this nice funicular. In the main part of the city, there's a funicular that goes up the really steep hill and has some nice views. And I, this is, I took my first rest day here in Pittsburgh. So I took, this is the top of a tourist bus. I paid the, uh, you know, give me the half day bus tour. And it was interesting, it was worthwhile. This is their old train station, which is unfortunately no longer a train station. It's now a, uh, it's a restaurant and a couple of stores, but no, no trains. 
and this is the this is the next trail. Do we have some questions there? I saw the. No, I just muted everybody because someone had gone to do their dishes and yeah, okay. background good. noise. So we're good. Oh wait, so this is a, so no, this there is was a, a question. There was yeah. does general delivery work if you send it to a big city. Absolutely. Except you have to know the exact postal, you have to know the post office in that zip code that you're sending it to. Like the zip plus four, you know, the whole zip code, but they'll hold it for you too. Yeah. The other question that one did go by was, what did you do for SAG support? Did you take gear along in case of a breakdown or was there someone you could call in an emergency? I could call lots of people in the emergency and they'd commiserate with me mightily, but nobody was going to help me. Um, no, I just had what I needed with me, hopefully, and I kind of hoped that nothing really bad would happen. I had a lot of tools and stuff, but if the bikes, in good condition really things shouldn't happen and not not to ruin the ending but nothing did happen i got one flat like in uh in idaho and that was pretty much it well i think i broke a little piece off my fender and i had to like tape it on sometime in the first week you know a little screw fell out but that was all that happened the whole trip So this is the next rail trail, which is just very, um, you know, a couple, an hour or two or three, I forget, but not far out of Pittsburgh going west, you get on this panhandle trail, which goes through that long upper part of, uh, of West Virginia. And then it turns and it combines with a monitor trail, which is another rail trail. So it's a, kind of a day, day and a half, almost all the way between Pittsburgh and, and Wheeling, West Virginia. You get did to you do ride, there. Did you ride at night? No, I rode at dawn. I rode pre-dawn, you know, like uh, maybe 20 minutes before, dawn, before the sun hit the horizon, but I didn't go at night. And is the bike you used the same bike you use in the recent leadership program? Yeah. Um, it's last year's, the black one with the fenders. The, if it's the one from 2019 where it was, sometimes I take the red one and sometimes this black one. This is the one with the, if there's any chance it's going to rain, I take this one because it has fenders. And so almost always I wind up with this one. Okay. So I think so. But on day rides, I'm kind of 50-50 if it's going to be the red one with no fenders or this one. With defenders and i know you invited some friends here so um someone uh, is doing a plug for recycle a bicycle in harrisburg would have helped uh -huh. you in pa can you guess who that is <laughs> yeah okay. my my favorite five borough bike to a huffy marshall ross <laughs> there you go yes. all right um so here so this is the bridge over the ohio river in uh in wheeling west virginia it turns out, so it looks kind of Brooklyn Bridge-ish. Um, and it turns out it was built in 1846, 49, and it was the longest suspension bridge in, uh, in the United States for quite a while, possibly until the, the Brooklyn Bridge went up. Probably the nicest thing in Wheeling, West Virginia, which is not a wonderful place, but not as bad as I expected either. And these, this is the the river valley there, the Ohio River, and uh, some nice train bridges and, you know, a little misty morning. And this is on yet another rail trail out of, uh, out of Wheeling. I, I like this caution sign. It's nice upright farmer on his tractor, very quiet road but, and hilly, um, as you'd imagine. But, you know, just green and beautiful. Still, all these days were very hot, so I'd get early starts, pretty much dawn, and by 11 o'clock, it was in the 90s and humid. So at this point, I'm still, I'm not on the, um, I, I went off the adventure cycling route after Pittsburgh. So this is, uh, this is some of my, some of these I, roads I guess on, and some of them I look on the internet and find some suggestions. So this was a, 
a deep gravel road that I was already on. And then I saw pavement ends and I'm like, this is pavement. <laughs> you know, this is not pavement. And this is now into Ohio. So as soon as you cross the Ohio River from Wheeling, the next, you're in the next state in Ohio. This is um, Circleville, Ohio, where Tasrov, the tour of the Scioto River Valley, a kind of famous bike, two-day bike tour in Ohio that's been going since the early 70s goes through this place. And it just wanted the big, beautiful uh, city hall civic centers, those kind of Midwestern towns have. And now that you're in Ohio, there's, you know, you have the grain elevators by the trains, right, pretty much right in town, like two blocks from the city hall is this thing. People are really loving the pictures, so thank you, Ed. Thank you. This is my companion, so of course I'm riding by myself, and in the morning I'm like, oh yeah, hi. I'm, I'm keeping up with you, right? <laughs> I'm not too slow. <laughs> So that so that's so that's my friend every morning riding along with me. And there's a this kind of central Ohio has a pretty big um, bike. This is a this is a bike uh, you know bike trails in these towns that they've kind of made. A, they had a lot of trains and now they're rail trails, and they have many miles. A very nice system with signs to tell you where you are, where you're going, some maps, you know, distances. Very nice system. And this is, this is just one of those rail trails. Tell us about refilling water bottles. Did you know in advance where you'd find a water source? Was it reliable, no, the particularly first, when it was hot? The first, uh, what was it, like the third day, I guess, I, I, I made up such a beautiful route that I did not pass any store or any anything. And I ran out of water and I just like stopped in front of, and there was not many houses either. And I stopped in front of somebody's house where there was a car visible in the driveway. And I just kind of stood around for a couple of minutes. And luckily the person came out and was like, oh yes. And they, they gave me water. I talked to them for, you know, for like 20 minutes, you know, about their kid riding a bike and about them riding a bike and how much, um, you know, she had had a bike accident and she stopped, but she wants her son to ride and he likes it and very interesting conversation. And I got a lot of water from her. So that was nice. I had those two, um, two 24 ounce water bottles and one more that I could keep in the pannier, but I, I don't think I even filled that up. Pretty much I would stick with the 224s. And other than that one day, there was enough. After that, I made sure to stop and always fill up everything. Did you take in the sights while going to destination or did you play music? Did you sing? What, what kind of things did you do to pass the time? Well, so I had that music I had on at the beginning. Um, that was a typical thing that I would just have going in my head and I could, I'm good at playing. I have a pretty long playlist in my head, so I select some and I kind of will go with that for quite a while. And then somehow I don't get bored with that. <laughs> uh, maybe I should. And I, I was able to do sightseeing. Partly my usual thing, even if, unless it's really cold, um, which this trip, the three cross country trips, it's never been cold. It's always way too hot. Um, so I leave around dawn and I'm done by noon because I'm doing 50 or 60 miles. So kind of 6 a.m. to noon gets me 60 easily enough. And I get into town and take a shower and have lunch and then I have the afternoon in town. So I'll, I'll go to the town museum or the town library or just walk around. So that's kind of my sightseeing is in the afternoon. So, Ed, are you cheating and reading the questions and answering them without speaking them? <laughs> Someone just asked, how many hours or miles did you ride per day? <laughs> uh, well, that's the, that's the most famous question. I figured I may as well throw that in sometime. The minimum was pretty much 30. If you're not going to do 30, it doesn't pay to get your clothes dirty um, and have to wash it again. Because I had two, two shorts and two tops, and I had to wash either every day or every other day. Um, so if 
you know, 30, and 30 miles is pretty much, it's either two hours early in the morning or maybe it's three if it's getting warmer or if it's hilly. So you can kind of always do 30 miles. And I'd kind of try for, for the 50, 60, but it didn't, you know, I, a lot of my 30s I was going for 50 or 60 and I would do a half day and by the time it was 10 o'clock, it was already 90 degrees. And I decided that that was good enough and this town looked nice. So I would just stop at 10 and go in and have, uh, have breakfast and then go to a motel and see if they could take me early. And if not, I'd go have lunch. And eating, eating was very uh, rewarding on this trip. So I didn't get to go to this. These, when I first saw it, I'm like, oh, this is really a, an out of uh, time backward town, but it was a little historic village that they had, instead of knocking down these nice log cabins, they had put them together, but I didn't get to go in there. And it's, and it's hilly, so it was pretty much quiet. One of the problems of being quiet, of, of these quiet roads, especially as you got more to, into Ohio and Indiana, is it was popular to have two really nasty dogs that would run out at the, on the road at you and not leave you alone. <laughs> so that was like, if it was a hill and it was on the downhill, I could outrace them. If it was on the uphill, it was, it was not easy. Um, sometimes I would just get off on the opposite side and start walking along and wait for a car to come by, which would take sometimes a few minutes, five minutes, while the dogs bark ferociously. And when the car came by, I'd get on the bike and ride, you know, kind of on the other side of where the dogs were to keep the car between me and the dogs. And I confessed to kind of hoping that the dog got hit by the car, but it never happened. So this is, so that last one was Indiana, and this is also Indiana. So this group so now I'm outside of uh, Bloomington, Indiana, you know, home of uh, that Breaking Away movie. And, they, this is, and this is the first cyclist I'd seen the whole trip because I was just in these out of the way rural places. Um, and they, they were ahead of me and I, I, you know, I saw their collars way ahead because like you could see from that rolling hill road you know, it's like, it was pretty much a road just like this. You could see them two hills, three hills away. So I said, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna catch them because I'm really strong now. But of course they don't have anything on their bike. So, and I'm not really that fast anyway. So I was just barely catching up to them and every downhill I'd catch up and every uphill they'd pull away a little bit, but I'd catch up more on the down than them on the up. And just as I caught them, like I, I was just crested a hill and thought, I hope I'm close now. They were stopped and I'm like, oh, they must have seen me. And they, you know, they're wondering like, who's this guy behind them? But no, it turned out one of them had had their right pedal fall off the crank. And I pulled up just behind them and they had no idea I was there. Just as one of the guys said, oh, too bad. There's no way to fix that. You know, we're going to have to leave you here. And I said, oh, no, I can fix that. And they all turned around like, who is this guy? So I, I fixed her pedal by doing the trick where you put the pedal, you re-thread it from the center of the frame towards the outside, and that re-threads the threads that have gotten torn apart by having your pedal fall off. And then when you unscrew the pedal back from the inside and you screw it back in from the outside gently, it's good. So it's good for kind of a day if you're careful. It's not I good always knew, Ed, that you were, you were a bike angel, weren't you? <laughs> yeah, so it was very funny. They were like, where did you come from? So, so, of course, we then were Instagram friends for the rest of the trip, and they were, like, talking to me on Instagram. That was fun. And then this is them riding off into the sunset. It's like, oh, well, no more company for, for another couple of weeks, I think. <laughs> and they still have covered bridges, too, in Indiana. They actually have Pennsylvania Dutch people in Indiana. And, North, and Ohio. It's not all just Mike Pence there. This is another one of these beautiful court civic center buildings in the- 
Did you get lonely, Ed? No, well, I was eating out all my meals and staying in motels. So I would see, you know, kind of the, not only just the waiter, waitress at, at the eating place, but it's all small town America. So when you pull in with your screaming yellow jersey for, for breakfast or lunch, whoever's in there like talks to you, like, you know, kind of, you know, what's going on with you. And for dinner, I, I had only one set of clothes, but I, you know, you talk to the waiter, you talk to the people a little bit at the motel. I was calling people a lot on my cell phone, of course, too. But, so no, I didn't feel, um, you know, I didn't feel separated because the cell phone really keeps you well connected. Was there any rain even, to this point on the trip? What? Was there any rain to this point on the trip? There was never any rain. There was one morning of one hour of rain and I was wishing for rain. And I, I remember, I just looked at the Instagram the past couple of days and I see that I wrote, um, I, you know, I thought that rain would be better than heat and it finally rained and yes, rain is better than heat. Though it does depend on what kind of rain. So yes, I only had one hour of rain in, in four months. And this, you see this sky, no clouds. Basically, every day was no clouds, hot as hell, 100 degrees on the road by noon. So like a little thread of rain would have been wonderful. And even if it rained a bit, I would have been fine, but it, but it didn't. So this was a morning fog because you know, the kind of, even that was rare. There was only one, this was the only morning that I had fog. And fog I don't really like because the cars can't see you as well, so. But it was, it was nice, nice and mysterious. Can you remind everyone when you started and when you finished again and when in particular this scene that we're seeing uh, was? What, what? Yeah, so I started in, in May of 2018 like three days after the leadership class, the five BBC leadership class in May, which is, which that year was like uh, May 15th or something. So this was, so the start was something like the 18th, 19th. And one of, one of the um, problems for people who are in the 2018 leadership class, it rained one day or maybe both days and it was 45 and pouring and and we were riding the whole day in it. So I have all this gear that made that no problem for me, but I took that with me, of course, because I only left three days later. And some of those things were things that I sent ahead to myself that second day when I saw that it's like already in the 90s and I'm not going to be having 45 degree rainy days anymore. Because of course the leadership class is like 150 miles north of New York and by day three, I was hundreds of miles south of New York, and the, and plus the summer is progressing, so it was hot. And this is the first, so it says, welcome to Illinois. This is the first sign I saw to welcome me to any state after going through um, New Jersey didn't welcome me because I took the ferry and I guess they didn't really care. Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania did have a crummy little sign when I crossed the Delaware. But going into uh, Maryland, there was no sign to Pennsylvania. Again, West Virginia didn't have one. Ohio didn't have one. Indiana didn't have one. But Illinois finally had one. And the reason there is is because I'm on a parallel road to the interstate. So to the left of me is the interstate, and, and the road I'm on is the side road. So if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have gotten a sign either. So this is the nice southern Illinois town of Casey. This nice bank, but if you read the, down at the bottom, it says reflections of the past mini mall. So they didn't knock down the front of the building, but inside it's a really tacky, disgusting mall. But at least it's in the middle of the little town. And the town is very famous, Casey, for having, very famous in their own mind anyway. They have multiple, you see this chair? So they, they have a bunch of ridiculously sized big things like this, big chairs, big tables, a big bird, a big bread box, a big toaster, all kinds of stuff sprinkled around town. 
to get people to come to town to see their odd big things. And this was a, uh, you know, often when you're riding, it says road closed and you're like, oh, well, I don't, you know, that's just for cars. So this, you know, there was a sign before this, like a mile back, that said road closed because of flooding. And I'm like, nah, it's, you know, I'll just go through it. But actually there was, you, you can see there's a lot of water there. I think I can even zoom Is in. Is this a bit. the result of the one hour of rain that you had on your trip, Ed? No, no, it must have rained there, but it didn't rain, it didn't rain where I was. <laughs> but this was a deep thing, and it was actually like a running river that was probably, it was probably a few feet deep, um, but moving. And I was like, yeah, I'm not going to go through that. So then I had to ride back a mile to where I was supposed to have not gone down this road and then go like five miles out of my way and come up with a new route. So when that happens, Typically, I wind up picking up the phone and doing, uh, you know, Google, Google streets and looking around to see, like, what is this road? What's that road like? And, and come up with a new and prompt new route. And this, this is what the uh, interstate crossing is like. You know, you kind of, when you're on the interstate, you don't notice all these things going over it. But... Basically, I was not near any interstates or near any entrance or exits either, but you tend to go over just somewhere in the middle and you'd see civilization going by underneath you. So this is, this is another kind of bad choice of road. <laughs> uh, on the loaded bike riding up this kind of deep gravel, it doesn't really work. So there was a, a bunch of places where I just wind up kind of pushing the bike up a hill for you, you know, this is like a one, two, three minute walk, which is not really so bad if it doesn't happen all the time because it can almost be sort of nice to take a little walk sometimes. And it's more relaxing than struggling riding through the gravel and staying upright and going like four miles an hour. I can walk at three. And now finally I hit another rail trail and this is and they have a nice sign here. I can even zoom in a little bit. You can see that zooming, right? Yep. Yep. So okay. there's a nice you are here. You know, I, I had figured this out, how to get to the end of one of these rail trails. And I just ride down that rail trail down to there. And this is this is the Mississippi. And on the other side here, just off the map is St. Louis. So I ride down that thing and, and go, go on this, whoops, come back. Go on, that, go on that nice rail trail for a good long way. And as I was going, I met these guys. So this, so this guy is Bryce and he was riding a recumbent trike, electric recumbent trike, it turned out. And this is his brother-in-law and they were riding right next to each other as I was behind them and I'm like, oh, this is so annoying. I hadn't seen anybody for like, since those, Indi those Indiana people, pretty much the week before, I guess. Um, so I'm like, oh, you know, I, I'll catch up to them. Maybe they'll pull over, maybe they'll go single file, I'll ring the bell. Um, so I think I, I think I did pass them. I kind of rang and passed them and waved goodbye and stopped here, but then they caught up to me because there was a little bit of shade and I just stopped to look at the map and have a drink. It turns out he, Bryce is a really interesting guy. He's like my hero. He has Parkinson's. He, he can hardly walk like 10 steps, you know, much less go ride his bike. And he had ridden like hundreds and hundreds of miles to this point. His wife took the picture. So she was support for him and his brother-in-law here, who was kind of helping him out. And he was riding his, his electric recumbent trike, which doesn't, it's a uh, pedal assist. So it's not one of these throttle things that the delivery people here are using. If you're not pushing on the, it, push, it moves you in proportion to how hard you're pushing on the pedals. So if he's not pushing, it's not going. Um, and he was doing, you know, normal-ish mileage, you know, 40, 50, um, 
and for weeks and weeks and weeks. So I saw him a few different times and it was, it was really interesting. So it's kind of an interesting, it's interesting to kind of be annoyed at somebody behind while you're riding behind them and think, ah, oh, they're selfish, so, annoying people taking up the trail. Then you talk to them, it's like, ah, oh, I love you. <laughs> so we have a question about your socks, Ed. And I'm wondering if these show Hasidic roots or what? So I have black socks on. Those white things are um, UPF 50, you know, calf compression and sunscreen. So I don't have to sunscreen that part of my legs and because it's, it's, it's a 50 UPF and the white kind of reflects the heat of the sun and the compression kind of feels good too. So they're not hot when it's hot and they're a little bit warm when it's cold. So I kind of was really liking those things. And you'd see what I have on my arms is this white, the same thing, white UPF 50 sun sleeves. So the only sunscreen I did was this little bit of, you know, around my knee and, and lower thigh and my ears and my face and everything else was all covered up, which is kind of easier. This is the, the, so what I was writing on this other side, I wrote through this gate. This is the floodgates they have on the levees next to the Mississippi. So I'm like on the Mississippi side. And when, I guess when things get bad, they close these doors. And it holds back the river. So you could imagine, and, I, and when you hear sometimes it overtops them, like imagine it's like that thing being underwater. Pretty amazing. This is one of the locks along the Mississippi because there's all that shipping and the, you, you have to, so there's a series of lakes and locks for the length of it. And there's this nice rail trail going all along it. And this bridge in the background here is kind of where I'm headed off to. So this is the, this is the bridge over the Mississippi. This is kind of a New York style bike lane. It's like, yeah, you, know, you get like a little, you get a couple of white lines that keep the cars away from you. And this, uh, this is St. Louis. And here, this is my next homestay, Robert and Jocelyn, who were living in St. Louis at the time. So this was, this was my first fun um, drive in a car. I felt like a dog <laughs> where so he, I was in St. Charles on the other side of the river from him, west of him. And Robert picked me up with the bike after work on a Friday. The timing worked out well. Um, I did have to wait kind of all, uh, all day in St. Charles, but I was sitting in a cafe drinking coffee and eating endless amounts of food. So that was good. And then he drove me back to his house in St. Louis and I stayed there for two days. I think it was like a hundred, it was over a hundred both days and humid. So I was happy to just be like sitting in the air conditioning. Um, and here they're, they're making hummus, very, very fun weekend for me. And that, but that was my first pickup by car, which was nice. So, you know, the, you always wonder like, what does the dog think? And it's like, I get in the car, it's like, wow, how does it move this fast? This is so great. <laughs> So let me do, I'm going to do one quick interruption here and go back to the map world because, you know, so we went, oh, I have to re, I have to re, um, reshare. Right, so we, so we did this New York, Philly, Lancaster, York, Hagerstown, and up to Pittsburgh. It's sort of, I feel like it's sort of nice to see where you really are in, in this. And Pittsburgh is just up here. And then I was on this blue thing because this is the rail trail through Wheeling. And for a short while, I stayed on this trail, but then at Zanesville, I went off into, into another Lancaster that was not as nice as Pennsylvania's. And my basic rule was to kind of go in between all the 
cities. So I go here in between Dayton and Cincinnati. I kind of stay here and go, go in between Indianapolis and Bloomington. And then I'm kind of headed down to there. So there's Bloomington, I get north of Bloomington and I want to miss Terre Haute and just sort of angle along. And when I got to Effingham, this place, there, there's actually some nice side roads along I-70 that are not, um, not in sight of it, but that takes off all the traffic. And so you're on a nice quiet road. So I did that. And this is around where I picked up that rail trail that doesn't go quite into St. Louis. And then I'm back, I was back again on this adventure cycling route, which is also the um, St. Charles is where the Katy Trail starts. So this is where I got picked up, driven into St. Louis, back to St. Charles. And then I'll show you the next kind of week or so. It's along the Katy Trail here into Jefferson City. And then somewhere along here, it goes into Sedalia. The Katy Trail does. It goes off of this adventure cycling route. I think I will just continue on. So after going through, so there's Jefferson City. It goes, that Sedalia was over here. It goes through here into Western Missouri. And then I again kind of made my own thing up until I grabbed this red line. And this red line is the Adventure Cycling Trans Am 76 route. And from there on in, in Kansas, in Eureka, Kansas, then I just went along this, this route through Pueblo, Colorado, up into Canyon City, and up to Breckenridge. So. So back to pictures. Have questions about the map, the route, or anything else? Can you explain again why you needed to get picked up by a car in St. Louis? Because I was, because they lived in St. Louis and I was in St. Charles and would have, riding in the city really sucks if you don't know the city really well. So he drove, you know, 30, 40 miles, maybe 30 miles to come get me. So it just took him half an hour. That would have been like a day out of the way to go get to him in the city. And it was 100 degrees and it's crowded and I didn't want to figure it out. How many days at that point? This is now, uh, we're June. So we're kind of at three weeks, four weeks, maybe. Wow. If anybody has any questions, please type them into the group chat. Good. You still have about 30 minutes left. Are you going to get us all the way over to uh, Colorado? Is that where we're going? You were going to Colorado, yeah. Okay, so by Robert and Jocelyn. So this is, so then he drove me back to St. Charles, with it, which is kind of the unofficial start of the Katy Trail. It actually starts Are some mile. I don't think we're seeing a share. Oh, did I not click that? Um, So I think you're about 10 weeks where you are now, right? No, no, like it's May to June. It's late June, mid to late June, mid June. So more like five weeks. Yeah. Wow, so you can get from New York to St. Louis in five weeks. Okay, so now do we have? Yes. We St. John. Katy Trail State Park. Yes. So it turned out I was there for the one week a year where they have this mass ride along the whole Katy Trail with like 200 people, something like that. So I thought, oh no, it's going to be terrible. Turned out it was great. Um, you know, wrong again, of course. Um, a few people have uh, commented that they've done the Katy Trail. Anybody do it at the same time as the big ride? Just respond if you want to so share. But okay. So now this, this is the Katy Trail and this is the bike with the, so the only extra thing is now the tent is up on top and inside the panniers are the sleeping bag, the, 
the and the uh, my air mattress, which was a very wonderful air mattress. And it only added, so I got that sent to me in St. Charles, and it, I think the package weighed five and a half pounds. So the tent sleeping bag air mattress is, is not a big weight these days. And this is what the Katy Trail looks like, very much like the Gap Trail, this crushed limestone. So this is Matson, Missouri. It goes next to the, often next to the Missouri River. Sometimes you're out in the sun, but it's nice to have a big open view. So it's not like you're just in this tunnel of trees, which gets annoying. And there's these nice limestone cliffs um, in the shade. So here's another rest stop. Debbie Friedman will appreciate this. They're eating pickles on a stick. So they had pickles on a stick and unlimited pickle juice, cold pickle juice. Very wonderful. So that, that was one of the many things that made me glad that I was there at the same time as them. Because they were happy to give me their food at the rest stop. Nobody's, you know, nobody is like crashing this party or in the middle of nowhere in Missouri other than this group. So they don't have uh, wristbands like they do on big rides. I stayed in this place. It's a free dorm house that people who live around there and love the Katy Trail made, you know, chipped in and made. This is a you know, even bigger limestone cliff, more kind of sunny place, a bunch of tunnels. And then here's my, my friend Bill, who I had met in St. Charles. We spent the afternoon while I was waiting for Robert to pick me up in the car. He was waiting to have some work done on his bike. Um, so I met him. Um, and I went, so he continued riding. And I just went into St. Louis and I thought, oh, well, that was nice, but I'll never see him again. But of course, two or three days later, I just like ran into him on the trail. It's like, oh yeah, hi, Bill. And then we rode together for a few more days and then we separated again. And you'll see on the next week, we met up again, like a month later and rode again for like another week or so. So that was really fun. Did you enjoy so I, so sleeping one, out or did you prefer motels or homes and... Yes, perfectly timed question. I was just about to say, you see how much gear he has. He was cooking gourmet meals. He has, I have a tent and sleeping bag, but he has even more stuff and gear and food. He has days worth of food with him. And he's been making all kinds of vegetarian delights and camping out. And I have not camped out yet, even though I have my tent sleeping bag. So I quickly like talked him into well, let's leave the trail at, you know, we rode over this bridge and left the trail and stayed at this beautiful motel in separate rooms and had like big dinners. And he's like, oh, this is really good, Ed. I think you're corrupting me. So, so he got very corrupted by the time, by the time I was done with him, he was like sending a lot of stuff home and eating out a lot because why cook when there's all these places that want to feed you? So this is Sedalia. This is the end of the group trip. And there's, but there's one more day out of there. So I got to the high point on the trail, but now I'm all by myself again. Um, the high point here, you know, 955 is not very high, but it was actually an uphill. And this is, this is what these nice towns in Missouri look like. Nice old, you know, old brick buildings. This was, I, I was, every morning I was seeing wildlife like mad, foxes and all kinds of non-dog interesting wildlife, turkeys and rabbits and lots of deer too. Like it was kind of dangerous. So I got one little close up of a fox running by. Did you ever feel nervous for your safety? The deers, I had to worry about if I would get going fast because, you know, as a lot of people know, there's been like bicycle deer collisions if there's enough deer around and you know the deer wins when it hits the bike there's there's also a question uh, this was your third cross country trip so are you considering another one and would you video record it i'm definitely doing another one i won't video it because it's this is already too many pictures <laughs> But I will take some more videos for sure. I took a very few this time and I'm gonna take more next time. So Clinton is the end of, of the real end of the Katy Trail. And this is now 
to Western Missouri, and now I'm into Kansas, and I hit a little dirt road, but this is a nice dirt road. And this is still Kansas, so Eastern Kansas is not flat. It's the Flint Hills, I guess. It's still up and down. Um, this is dawn. It's, I'm never around at sunset. I'm asleep at sunset, but this is pre-dawn in a town in Kansas that has a nice rail trail that I'm riding on. The, the, the colors were not quite this, but they were very kind of otherworldly at that hour. And this is one where there was a lot of deer and I was kind of worried. This is a nice, uh, this, the typical town square. There was houses like this all around the square with a nice big park in the middle. And this is still Kansas. Finally, I have clouds. Didn't rain on me, but I, there's still hills in Kansas. And this is, this is the typical, can, you know, the Kansas wheat fields. I think that's probably wheat. Very beautiful, wonderful place. Not, not to be skipped on the interstate as people in their cars kind of feel like it. What did you take these pictures with? Almost all of them are with my iPhone 8. They're amazing. So these rows here, when I'd look at them at the corner of my eye, I could almost get dizzy because the row would sort of open and close as you go by. And this is this day I thought there was going to be a tornado. And I was like, look, I, I pulled into some garage. I finally found somebody and, and asked, is there going to be, a, should I worry about this cloud? And he said, well, it might rain on you, but it's not that bad. I was like, okay because there's no hiding you know, from the tornado in, the, in land like this. And the towns are typically 20 miles apart. So this is the next day, another dawn, another day, another dawn. Here's the sun just coming up in the east. And it, it would just make the, you know, the farms an amazing color from that morning light. And here's my one video that I think you should be able to hear. So did that work? Could you hear the birds sing? Yes, it was very nice. It, and that's just what it was like all the time. I would just stop for a drink or take a look or a picture and there's just, you know, the birds and the wind is blowing in the, in the, in the wheat. And it's like, ah, Kansas is, so Kansas is very nice. So now here's, here's uh, pickup, car pickup number two, David Schlichting, former five BBC leader, lived, grew up in Dodge City. So he picked me up somewhere in Kansas. Uh, he flew out because he, he likes going to Kansas and he has relatives there and relatives in Colorado. So he picked me up, drove me to Dodge City. This is their nice post office. There's David. David was, was killed that we were going to have a memorial ride for him um, last month, earlier this month. He was killed by a hit and run driver in Long Island last year. Um, and this, but this sign I thought was very funny, carrying firearms strictly prohibited. So this, this is um, Dodge City, it's the Dodge City from Gunsmoke, it's the real Dodge City and these buildings were really there and they just moved them all together on one street and preserved it and you have to pay money to go stand there. And they have a gunfight every day at noon or maybe it's every hour. And the gunfight is over carrying firearms. The sheriff comes and tells people you have to leave your firearms at the city limits and they, they have a gunfight over it. So I thought that's kind of an interesting gun control history <laughs> that that's how Dodge City went. So this is kind of a bigger view of what the, uh, the Dodge City main, you know, historic Main Street looks like. And this was taken by David as he dropped me back off. So the deal is where you, Wherever you pick me up with your car, you have to drive me back and leave me there so I don't cheat. So he drove me back where he got me two or three days later. And this is some more, just some more Kansas. I met another guy bicycling now that I'm on the Adventure Cycling Trail. Pretty much every day I'd meet people bicycling. This is, this is the, uh, 
museum. So this is a typical afternoon museum stop in, in a small town. So this is a museum with rock posts. You don't get that everywhere. And you can see the, the eight wonders of, uh, of Kansas. You know, among them is like soda fountains <laughs> and, these, and rock posts. And I, in this town, they also had a, uh, a really interesting barbed wire museum. The biggest barbed wire museum in the world, I believe. There's a lot of kinds of barbed wire. So now we're into Western Kansas, and now this is where it starts to get flat. And they still have some nice old houses from kind of turn of the last century. And this is my first night camping. This is the last town in Kansas before the Colorado border. This town used to have a motel and it closed down a year or two ago. So I had to camp. So the bike goes in, every town has a gazebo and a town pool and a town park and they let you just camp in the park. And this is dawn coming out of that place. In the mornings it's 60, you know, kind of 60 and, and by noon it's 100. So there's leaving Kansas, welcome to Colorado. And Colorado, Eastern Colorado is still flat. So it's even, it's pretty much as flat as Kansas. Hey, and I had, they, I, sorry to interrupt, I had a bit of a delay on my computer. So um, uh, I had the same question that Sarit asked, which was, did you have to lock the bike when you left it outdoors? Guess that you didn't necessarily feel the need, but did it get locked to that? Uh, oh yes. That, yeah. I locked, the, I locked the bike. Every time I went into a store, I locked the bike in the middle of no, in, well, not in the middle of nowhere if I was next to it, but if I went in to eat breakfast or lunch at a cafe, I always locked the bike outside, even though it's this tiny little town and everybody knows everybody and there's no way you could go anywhere with it without everybody knowing. Um, I always locked it anyway. So how good slash heavy a lock did you need? And did you have to get permission before you camped somewhere? Usually you do, yes. The, you're supposed to, you drop by the police station and say, I'm telling them you're going to camp in the park and they say, fine. They're all fine with it and they expect it because now this is on the, on the adventure cycling route. So people are doing it regularly, but they like to know partly because they watch out for you. They'll drive by once or twice at night to make sure nobody's annoying you. And so what kind of lock did you have with you? Oh, just the same thin cable lock you might have seen me use on rides, very thin, nothing thing. It's just so that you can't ride the bike away and say, I just wanted to see what it was like. You know, you have to break the cable, which means you need a cable cutter. A thin one would do it, but you need a cutter. Can you say more about town pools? Well, uh, can you see it there? Uh, not quite. There's, there's the towns will have a pool, you know, like, because it's hot <laughs> it's hot and the people can't afford to have their own pool and there's nobody around and they want to see each other you know like we're noticing now with social distancing it's like we want to all go to the same pool we don't want our own pool we want to visit so this is a comparison this is what's what it's like because of irrigation and this is looking on the other side of the road where there's no irrigation and it's just a sagebrush and this is my friend Eric from junior high school and high school and college. Um, so he picked me up somewhere in Colorado and drove me to his house for a couple of days rest and then drove me back where he found me and I kept going. So I had a nice couple of days rest. This is my only clothes. So it's only these pants. I have two t-shirts and this one shirt and that's it. And this is kind of leaving again. There's my company he, keeping me company on the road, still flat, flat. You kind of see it's trending up and there's the nice train tracks here. And this is the next hotel, the beautiful Hotel Ordway. I think even in its heyday, it was not very beautiful, but they had air conditioning. And this is now Pueblo, which is so much nicer, Pueblo, Colorado, um, so much nicer than I was there in 1976 where it was kind of a rundown place. It's really, you know, doing much better now. Lots of stores and shops and restaurants and 
you know, big variety of things. And finally, outside of Pueblo, an hour or so, I could finally start to see the Rockies. I've been in Colorado for like four days already, till you can see the mountains. So you prefer to do these long rides solo? Yeah. It saves arguments. <laughs> so this mountain there, I think that's Pike's Peak back there. Far away, uh, 14,000 footer. So here's a little more dirt road and still, you know, I go down into the trees a couple of hundred feet, come back up. Here's a paved one, another one you go down. The only place there's trees is in these sheltered hollows where there's more water and less wind. So it's down into it and then back up. How, how often are you washing your clothes and how are you doing every, it? Every day, every day in this, either every day in the sink or occasionally every other day in the sink. If I'm, but it's, it's the sink, you know, the, the short, the two bike shorts, two bike socks, two tops. So I could either wash it when I get in every day or if I'm really tired, I could do two at once. But two at once often don't fit, so it's kind of easier to do it every day. It's kind of annoying. It's a half an hour, 40 minute process. So this is an old movie theater that's closed up, which is typical in these small towns. This is Canyon City. And this is my high point, temperature 116 at, at 12.45. So I thought my head was going to explode. Typically, I give up when before it hits 100. Like I did a lot of upper 90s. But this day, the place I had to get to, I just was not there yet. So I had to go through some, uh, some 116. Were there some bad wind days? Yeah, not too bad. Not really. Nothing, you know, terrible. And this, this was the wonderful place I was headed to. So it's a KOA with lots of campers. But if you see this, this little house and this little house, they had cabins for rent with air conditioning for like, you know, 30 bucks. So I got a, so this was like my, my goal was to get some air conditioning since the 116 in the sun. So I got there not too long after that 116 with maybe an hour later. And then this is South Park, but not the uh, stupid show <laughs> with the nasty people. But now at least we're in the trees here. And I can see this is the kind of the real, like I'm getting to the mountains, there's snow on the mountains. And you can see the road here. So you, you really get to see what's gonna, what your fate is for the next good while. So you see the white line kind of going along and it's zigzagging along and it goes around there and it goes around there. And then it goes up there and it's going, it's going up that. And here's, you know, here's, you, so I went over that and here's the next one It kind of bends around and goes over another one. And then still I'm not in anything yet because I'm going to be among the snow mountains soon enough. So now these, these are those mountains from before, this is the next day. And finally there's a, there's a side path, which is nice because the cars and, Colorado are miserable, like much worse than New Yorkers. They're very, uh, they're very nasty. They don't like to move. They, they like to come as close to you as they possibly can. This couple I met um, as I was riding up the highest point on the Transamerica Trail, they, they got married. This was like their 42nd anniversary and they were married in 1976. And for their honeymoon, did the, this section of this trail. So they were back now 42 years later to do it again. So that was very sweet. And then this is Hooser Pass. That's the highest point for, for, of, my, of my trip and on the adventure cycling routes. This is the highest point. And that's, uh, that's that. You're getting applause here, Ed. Let me uh, let me go ahead and see if I can figure out how to unmute everybody. 
on everyone. Thank you. Any any questions before we end? It's not obvious where to do this. Still learning as we go here. I'll, I'll do one more quick screen share. So do you have this screen? Yeah, we see it. So this is warm showers. Um, so they, if you join warm showers, they will, uh, you need to do that to be able to stay at people's houses. And then it works kind of like couch surfing, I guess. You, you leave feedback for place, people you stay with and they leave feedback for you. And so they have this map here. I'll make it full screen, oops. Oh, did you lose, you lost, I lost the screen share, right? Yeah, you got a screen, let's share it again. So all of these, so this blue line is adventure cycling route. And these little icons here mean that there's somebody there who's a, um, who's a host or, or you yeah, actually, you don't know if they're a host or a visitor. So you have to click on it and see. And sometimes you see that they, you know, so you see their little description. I'm a bike mechanic and bike tour guide you know, right off the trails so was like, oh yeah, that's good. But he said he can offer a primitive camping spot, a shower and a shower. And I was like, no, I want an air conditioner and a bed. So I didn't go visit him. But this, so that's the, you know, that's their map. And these, you know, these are the numbers of hosts. So in a busy place, like around Washington, there's 137. As you get further out, there's like not many at all. So, but I was, this is one of the things that I was using to, um, to see if I could find a homestay to go stay with somebody. Awesome. Okay, any questions? Why did you stop in Colorado? Any particular reason? I think that's just a the trip up, right? Because it would take an hour and a half. Because I figured it would take me about an hour and a half. <laughs> uh, so I'm opening up everybody's line in case you all want to chime in and give a big round of applause. Uh, most of you have been unmuted. Those of you who allowed it. Yay! Yay! And, uh, we're going to have uh, Ed continue this in the next uh, two weeks on two Fridays. And just to remind you all, we have a dance party on Saturday nights. The link's on our website. And we're doing a stretching, a cycling stretching class on uh, Monday. You can also find that detail on our website, bbc.org. And on Wednesday, we're having a mechanics class uh, with uh, flax, flat fix. So I thank you all. Unless there's anything else, Ed, I'm going to... Close the meeting out. Okay, I'll just say what the next two ones are because there's so many people here. So That's next right. week, the photos are much better, actually. It's, it's more photogenic, you know, Colorado, Wyoming, Montana. Right, so for those beautiful. of you that I noticed dozing off, which are, by the way, none, <laughs> it gets even better next week. So I hope to see you all next Friday again. Thank you so much for joining and thank you so much, Ed Sobin. We're excited. Thank you, Thank you, Alan. Bye, Ed. Bye, Thank you very much. Be well. Stay strong. Stay healthy. Bye. 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 Bye.